Hey guys, so in this video I want to talk about using the conservation of energy equation to solve projectile motion problems. Let's check it out. So it says here projectile motion problems asking for speeds or heights are easier to solve um, using conservation of energy equation. Now, they're not always easier to solve, they're sometimes easier to solve, and you can't always do this, and I'll talk about this more at the end, um, but we can use energy because speeds have to do with kinetic energy and heights have to do with potential energy. So we're going to be able to, in some cases, use this equation, which will be preferable because instead of having to pick one of the three or four equations of motion and have to worry about directions of positive and negative and all that kind of stuff, and have to worry about decomposing vectors, um, we can just instead use the energy equation in some cases to solve it all at once. All right. So here it says you throw an object, a five kilogram object, from the top of a 30 meter tall building. So this is 30 meters right here with 20 meters per second. So if you launch with 20 meters per second, this means that VA right here is 20 meters per second directed at an unknown angle. So we don't know this. Okay. Um, above the horizontal. It says that the object reaches a maximum height of 40. So if you are at 30 and then you get to 40, it's because this additional height here is 10 meters. You could write this or you could just write that the whole thing is 40. Ignoring air resistance, so there's no work done by friction, um, calculate the object's speed at points B, C, and D. Okay, so let's start over here and I want to find the velocity of the object at point B. So I know information about point A, I know my initial height at point A, and I know my initial velocity at point A, and I want to know information about point B. So I'm going to write an energy equation from A to B. And it's going to look like this, Ka, Ua, work non-conservative, Kb, Ub. All right, there is kinetic energy at point A because I have a velocity, there's potential at A because I have a height, there's no work non-conservative. Remember, um, 20 meters per second is after it's already left your hand. So while it's uh, between, between the time that it leaves your hand with 20 and it gets to be over here, um, or actually throughout the entire motion even, you're not doing anything, right? So the work done by you is zero. You did work in throwing it, remember, but the problem starts counting uh, once it leaves your hand with 20. So the work done by you is zero. Uh, and there's no friction. There's kinetic energy at point B, all right? Um, some people sometimes here might make a mistake and think that, well, the velocity at point B is zero because it's the highest point, but no, the velocity in the y-axis at point B is zero. So the velocity of B is simply made up of its velocity in the x-axis, which if you remember, velocity in the x-axis never changes, so it's VAx, it's whatever the initial velocity in the x-axis was. All right, uh, just as a quick reminder of how some of this stuff in projectile motion works, but you didn't really need to know all of that for here or remember all of that. You just had to, um, you just had to not think that the velocity would be zero at the top, okay? VB is not zero. So I have kinetic energy because VB is not zero and I have potential energy because I have a height. So I have all four types of energies here. Um, and let's do this. So half MVA squared plus MGHA equals half MVB squared plus MGHB. By the way, one of the things you could have done here is you could have said, to make it a little bit simpler, you could have said, well, since I'm going from A to B, I'm going to say that this is a height of zero, and then this is a height of 10. You could have done that if you wanted to, all right? I didn't do that here, but it doesn't matter. It won't affect the final answer. It would have just made things a little bit simpler. Here the masses cancel. And if I plug in these numbers, I have half 20 squared. Gravity, I'm going to use 10. The height at point A is 30. VB is what we're looking for. Gravity is 10. And the height at B is 40. All right? You've got all the numbers. All you have to do is solve for VB. If you move all the stuff around, okay, I'm going to fast forward a little bit here. But if you move all this stuff around and you solve for VB, you get that VB is 14.1, roughly 14.1 meters per second. Okay, so nothing special here, just basic conservation of energy equation. All right, for part B, we're being asked, what is the velocity at point C? Right, what is VC? Well, to do this, we can write an equation from A to C. But we actually don't have to do that. We don't have to write an equation from A to C at all. I should know 
um, from conservation of energy that if A and C are at the same height, they have to have the same speed, right? If they're at the same height, they have to have the same speed. So since the height at C is the same as the height at A, I can tell you that the velocity or the speed at C is the same as the speed at A. So it's going to be just 20 meters per second. Um, we can also think of this in terms of symmetry. If you remember symmetry from projectile motion, the speed going up is the same as the speed going down um, for points that are symmetric. And because the speed up is the same as the speed down, whatever VAY is is the same as VCY. And the velocities in the x-axis never change. So VCX is VAX. Combine the fact that it's symmetric up and down and that the x-axis never changes, you end up having a VC that is exactly the same as VA. We talked about this in projectile motion, um, but you can also just have a simpler answer to this in terms of energy. If the heights are the same, the speeds have to be the same. Okay, So that's how we get rid of V real quick. Um, let me now let me now solve part C. Part C is the velocity at point D. Velocity at point D. All right. So to do this, we're going to have kinetic initial. Um, I'm sorry. We're going to write um, an energy equation from, let's say, A to D. I could have written one from B to D. I know information about B to D. I could also even have written one from C to D, since I know the height of C and the speed of C. But it doesn't really matter. They all work, and they're all equally. Um, equal amounts of work. KD, UD. There is a kinetic energy at point A. There is a potential energy at point A. We're going to say that the ground is zero at, over here. There's no work. There's kinetic at point D because it's right before you hit the ground. And there's no potential energy there. So this is half MVA squared. MGHA, half MVD squared, all the masses cancel, and we're looking for VD. Let's plug in numbers. Half 20 squared plus 10, the height is 30, equals half VD squared. If you move everything out of the way, um, this, is, this is 200 plus 300. And this 2 multiplies over here, and then VD then becomes... 31.6 VD is 31.6 meters per second. Um, it should make sense that VD is greater than VA, right? 20, you go up, now you have um, 14, you come back down to 20, and then you go back down and you're a little bit faster at 31. Okay, VC was 20. And the last question is, Part D, what would be the velocity at point T? It says right there, what is the velocity at point T had it been thrown at any angle below the x-axis? So what is the velocity at point D if instead of launching this up, you had launched it with a VA equals 20 that made some negative angle here? In other words, you threw it down instead of throwing up. Um, what would it be the velocity at point D? And I can tell you real quick that without having to solve this, the velocity would be exactly the same because the direction at which you launch the object doesn't matter. Because we're doing this using the energy equation. Energies are scalars, not vectors, so their direction does not matter. Okay, so I'm going to write here, um, direction does not matter. So you have it in your notes. And you can do this by looking at the energy equation and realizing that it just has speed, not Vx, not Vy. Uh, not sine of theta, cosine of theta, none of that stuff. So there are no thetas, vx, vy, just v in the energy equation. Energy equation. Okay? So this means vd is 31.6 irrespective of the direction that you toss it at. Even if you threw it straight up, it would have still have been um, 31.6 on the way down. So that's, a, that's an important conceptual point that you should know, that irrespective of the direction, the final total speed will always be the same because it depends only on the initial speed and the initial height. Okay, And that's from conservation of energy.
All right, I have a second example here. Let's check that out.